2024 UK general elections, a Yoruba party candidate sets to contest for the month of parliament. The UK's general elections to constitute the next parliamentary session of the Palace of Westminster, the month of parliament, as it is fondly called, will be held on Thursday, the fourth day of July 2024. In the 900 years that the palace has existed as a place of authority, and ever since 1688, at the beginning of the English Civil War, when Parliament seized power from the monarch, history will be made on the 4th of July, a political party which claims to be representing the cultural, ideological, and economic interest of Britons with Yoruba ancestry from one of UK's formerly colonized territories on the west coast of Africa, the Yoruba party will feature a candidate, obviously, from the parliamentary constituency where Perkham in the borough of Southwark is located, which are sometimes jocularly called the Leife dual conurbation in England. Dr. Shola Oni, founder and parliamentary candidate of the party, is our guest today. Doc, welcome to Plus Politics. Yes, I'm, I'm here. Okay, uh, I wonder why you, you suddenly disappeared. So did I. I, 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 hope, I hope it's not a classic case of a bay, a bay taking you out of the picture. <laughs> I hope not. I'm, I'm still trying to find you, in fact. Uh, I can hear your voice well enough. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Fantastic. You were stable for a while. I wonder why. Uh, I guess uh, they say they say you Yorubans are somewhat intrepid. You, you, you are scared. <laughs> I wonder why when we were about going live, you, 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 you seem to have chickened out. Uh, not not this man, not this Ijesha man. We never chicken out. Okay, don't mind my don't, don't mind my chicky piece, my chicky person. <laughs> Doctor Oni, give us a a brief introduction of who Doctor Oni is. What's your background? Where are you coming from? How long have you been in England? Uh, what what gives you what some may believe to be the temerity? To want to do what you do, just a brief for no more than one to two minutes. Let's go. That's fine. I, my name is Olu Shalawani. I am Bashi Gwalabe of Ijebidesha. I uh, went to primary school in Ijebidesha, St. Matthews B. From there, I went to Ibadan Boys High School. From there, I spent a brief period at uh, Oyo, Oliver Baptist High School. Before I was admitted, by exam to the University of Ibadan Medical School, where I graduated in 1973. In 1974, I uh, proceeded to England to study as a surgeon, and I was fortunate to to, to, to have succeeded pretty quickly, actually. Uh, and and one of the it's not a problem really is that when you start to become successful, you get the next job. And then you get the next job, and then you get the next job, then you get married, you buy a house. Before you know it, you spent 50 years. Uh, so that, that's, that's my background. I'm actually not a politician, I've never been a politician. But uh, certain things that I saw over a period of time made me feel that we, as Yoruba people, needed our own political voice before we get to that before we get to that don't don't jump the gun i'm not I'm jumping not, i'm not jumping we will said that this is going to be like a banter between two friends exactly uh, I exactly i uh, forget about my sartorial disposition uh, <laughs> so uh, anyway jokes apart now um 50 years being a resident in england 50 years having studied and worked in England, 50 years having, um, having bred a family in England, uh, and all this while, you must have, even if you were not primarily a politician, you must have 
had some political dispensations with some of the uh, major parties, the Conservative, the Labour Party, and even I would want to believe that uh, in the last 50 years, as a result of the maneuverings of uh, Winston Churchill at some point, the Lib Dem came up, emerged to be a third force at some point about 20, 25, 30 years ago. Uh, so which of these parties are uh, you always had to support in the past, even if you were not uh, partisanly involved as, as it was? None. No. I, have, I, have, I have never belonged to either the Labour, the Tory, or the Lib Dem because they don't articulate what i want they don't they don't speak the language that i want i've never been uh, involved in, in 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 their politics uh, i've never been interested in their politics whatsoever um the the only time that i've ever stood election was uh, when i stood election to go to the general medical council which was uh, an election of doctors uh, uh, what happened? What happened there? Oh, I won. I I I I was a member of the General Medical Council from 1999, I think, to 2002. And was that an inspiration of the sort that you could uh, ultimately go the own org when it comes to partisan uh, conversing or partisan disposition? Was that in any way, shape, or form? Uh, well, an inspiration for you? Well, one of the things that becomes apparent when, when you become involved in something like the, the, the General Medical Council is, is you begin to be exposed to the unfairness. For example, when I first came to this country and before I joined the General Medical Council, there used to be two separate registers. One for those of us who train overseas and one for those who train in this country. In fact, they treated South African, uh, Australian, and uh, New Zealand doctors differently from the way they treated us. And one of the outcome of being in the GMC is that the GMC then ended up having just one register for everybody. The point I used to make then was that when a patient sits in front of me, the patient doesn't ask where I, where I qualified. Patient just wants a competent doctor. And therefore, the idea of having separate registers has nothing to do with the medical practice. It has more to do with the establishment. And, uh, you know, the, 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 the eventually, we, we, we persuaded the council to have just one register for everybody. So that's really uh, the beginning of seeing what, is this, what it is like uh, uh, and what I always tell people when they ask me why, what right have I to form a political party? And I usually give them three reasons. The first reason is that we live here. I know some of us have our legs, one leg here, one leg in Nigeria, but our kids only have two legs here. So, from our point of view, it is our civic duty to look after ourselves politically, just like the Indians do it, the Pakistanis do it, the Jews do it. So it is our job to look after ourselves politically, to have political strength. So that's, that's one reason for having a political, uh, the Yoruba party in the UK. The second reason, which might be new to most of your audience, is that on the 23rd of July, 1888, Alafia Deemi, the, 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 um, uh, who was then the head of, of the Yoruba land, signed a treaty with Queen Victoria of, of Britain. A treaty, a non-session treaty, which means they weren't going to take our land. Number two, it was a friendship treaty Number three, it was a preferential trade treaty. The purpose of it was to develop Yoruba land. It wasn't to do anything else. The purpose of that trade agreement is to develop Yoruba land. 
And today, I know. most of us don't seem to have taken advantage of it. So that's that's another reason, another right, another reason why we have the right to have our political party. The third reason is that for the for the last since fifteen hundred, from fifteen hundred to eighteen hundred, five to ten million of us were taken through the transatlantic slavery to the Americas. We our blood, our sweat, built America, the, the prosperity of America. We built the pro prosperity of, of, of Britain. Therefore, we deserve more respect than we get. Today, most of the people who care, who do the caring professions, are us. We are the ones doing it. So, from my point of view, we deserve respect. And so, so, so you can see why I say we have a right to form a political party in the UK. Okay. Uh, before we get to the formation of the political party, I really want to take you through some of the things that such Dutch courage, quote unquote, permit me being a bit cheeky. Uh, some of the things that such Dutch courage may may have historically been registered to have cost your people the Yorubas. Um, you were you were taken like you had earlier said you were taken with some other uh, persons and people from other tribes on the west coast of Africa to Latin America. Mm -hmm. uh, in in Brazil, the Yorubas ultimately became the most coherent and articulated a culture, a practice, indeed, in Bahia, in the state of Bahia, uh, as we speak. Yeah, vibrant Yoruba communities and the, okay. one, of the, one of the official languages of uh, Brazil now is actually Yoruba. Uh, we know that one of the fastest growing religions in Latin America today, Santeria, mm -hmm. is a religion that is primarily built on the Ifa cosmology. Mm -hmm. That is the Yoruba divin Ifa divination. Mm -hmm. We know that you know the Yorubas have a have a resurgent community, quote unquote. My word resurgent community or Yotunji. Uh, in somewhere in Carolina in North America, yeah. we know that uh, there are, say, like, say in Barbados, the official residence of the Prime Minister is called the La Ilaro, Ilaro Court. Uh, we know there are, there are enclaves in Jamaica, one not too far away from Kingston called Abekuta. Uh, you know, largely, and we know that even in central London, uh, even in central London, there's a little art literally ornamented with shells that is called the Ajay, uh, Ili Ajay of, of the sort. But these are tokenisms that tend to give people the impression that you Yorubas are arrogant, overly conceited, and you overstart yourselves. Uh, before you respond to that uh, theory or that opinion that some have posited, you also want to realize because you are not too young and you are you are old, you are older than I am. And if I have read it, you must have read it that the the rate at which Yoruba elite after the Second World War, who came to England to study, like the Paralayo days of this world, the Paragasins of this world, Chief uh, Abafemi Awolowo, the rate at which they were replicating the progressive ideas of the first Labour Party that came into being in 1945, free education, free health service, which were which were fundamentally replications of 
free education in England, free the NHS, the backing of the NHS, also they stopped some colonial officers and they made sure that uh, the, 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 the political machinations that led to Nigerian independence did not ultimately favor the Yorubas because they felt you guys were punching above your weight intellectually and that was some some people believe that was one of the reasons why they made sure that even in the deserted, geographically deserted north, they made sure that they, they said they were far more, more popular than you. And when they were when they were making parliamentary deliminations and constituencies, they made sure you know the north got more. How would you respond to that? That you okay. you that you uh, arrogant only may be taking the Yoruba in the same direction now in the UK. Okay, I'm going to start from where the, the, you used the word arrogance. That's what stuck in my mind when you when you are, when you are uh, talking. You talked about arrogance. I am happy to be called arrogant. I'm a Yoruba traditionalist. I'm a Yoruba nationalist. I'm a Yoruba monarchist. And I have every reason to be arrogant. We Yorubas were not Yeye people. We were present at the beginning of time. We were present at the beginning of time when the old heart was water. And Obatawa then came down with, with soil and spread it from the earth. What is the alternative uh, uh, European explanation? Same thing. The world was water and asteroids fell from the skies. We say Obatala, they say asteroids. We Yoruba, we have every right to be arrogant. Because our civilization is one of the oldest in, in, in the world. Our civilization is so, was so advanced that we had our own medicine. And our medicine is similar to what you call orthodox medicine now. Because our, our medicine was based on pathology disease. It wasn't this, uh, you know, the Indians and, and the Chinese talking about yin and yang and uh, hot and cold. No. The Yoruba medicine was founded on the principle of pathology that kokuru, kokuru, tanwiji is what caused disease. And the way to treat it is ago, which is, which, which is pharmaceutical. We Yoruba, we introduced vaccination to the world. We were, tri we were vaccinating ourselves against Shapana, smallpox, before the Europeans had any idea what it is. It was one of us that introduced vaccination to them in Boston, in America. So when you say we are arrogant, I am happy to say we are arrogant. I am arrogant Yoruba man. If okay. it was not because of our arrogance, our language, our religion will have disappeared in the, in the Americas. If a friend of mine has just been to Trinidad, she's been going around Trinidad, look, you know, she's, she's, she's she, and she's been sending me pictures and videos of where she's been, she's been visiting different shrines and so on and so forth. We, you, you talk about all oh, other Africans who were taken as slaves. Who knows them now? Only the Yorubas have remained true to their origin. And that's the same point we are making here, even, the, even in England. We should remain true to our origin, regardless of where we are. If people who are enslaved, treated so inhumanly, could stay true to their origin, why can't we? So, so when when somebody talks of, about arrogance, I'm happy to be to be called an arrogant Yoruba man. That's fine. That's fine. But that does not stop me from looking after other people. After all, I'm an orthopedic surgeon, and I treat pe people, you know, of different colors, different races, different everything. The fact that we are proud of our origin does not stop us from looking after other people when we have the opportunity to do so.
uh, uh, just a cheeky one before you know I, before I come back to you. Uh, you know you have accepted me the way I am. Um, I, I know that your children are largely medical practitioners too, doctors yes. and surgeons. Yes. I know uh, how how do they feel about this your uh, this your cultural come political expedition. Or adventure, if I may, you know, if you may have said. <laughs> like, like everything as they think that that's mad. Oh, that, 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 that is mad. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I want you to say it in such a way that. Uh, you know, <laughs> okay, okay, let's come back to the serious bit of it. Yeah. Uh, Doc, I wouldn't suppose you understood the importance of the question that I was asking. When I did uh, a cursory historical excursion of how uh, the Nigerian uh, Nigerian flag and anthem independence was so orchestrated, allegedly, uh, and as some have theorized, was so orchestrated by the colonial officers to make sure that the Yorubans were. Because marginalized. Because between 1953 and 1959, when Chief Obafemi Awolowo, when Chief Obafemi Awolowo was the premier of the Western region, the rapacious rate of development was said to have confounded. Was reportedly said to have confounded some of the colonial officers. Of course, and they thought that if you people emerged to be the dominant uh, uh, this thing in Nigeria, you could be challenging the development in United Kingdom, say, in about maximum two decades. And I'm think, uh, and I'm sitting here now thinking, if this man knows how sometimes this kind of, this kind of quote-unquote effrontery, this kind of intrepidity, ideological intrepidity, if he knows how much he sometimes gets the establishment to fight back, you may be thinking, okay, let me give you a practical practical scenario now. This is a time when the Labour Party is looking at coasting on, literally being shoot into government again after 14 years of being out of power. And here you are going to a, a historic labor constituency to dilute the volume or the magnitude of votes that we get in that constituency. Okay. And okay. you don't think that some labor establishment personalities, if they eventually emerge, we just say, you know what? Uh, housing, uh, housing opportunities in South Oak, uh, anything regarding privileges and residential uh, opportunities in, in Pekka, because of that doctor denied the Yorubas. You don't think you could be just thinking aloud now? How okay. do you want to do that? Okay. I will use a single word, Jews. I will, to, just to be absolutely clear, I will use a single word, Jews. They have about the same number as the Yoruba in London. Today, if a politician says anything against the Jews in this country, his political career is over. Jeremy Corbyn was the leader of the Labour Party not too long ago. But because he antagonized Israel, the Jews, he lost, he lost his leadership of the Labour Party. He is no longer in the Labour Party. Because he allegedly. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, I mean, yes, allegedly. But the, the point I'm making to you is this. The Jews of Britain determine what this, the attitude of this country to Israel. Same number as us. They have so much political clout that they have so much influence that what this country does in, 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 in Israel, the Jews dictate it. 
So, why is it that only we Africans should be politically weak? Why should we Africans be the only one that is subservient to everybody else? Enough is enough. Okay, okay. Let me just, because I'm coming to the housing bit in a minute. Because Labour has been uh, the dominant party in, in Peckham for the last 42 years. In that period, they closed the only police station in, in Peckham. They said Peckham, the crime rate is high. They closed the police station. So that if, if you are attacked on the streets, you have to travel five miles to get to a police station. Let's get our yeah. facts right. Let's get our facts right. As at the last yeah. time, as at the last time I was actively involved in politics in the UK, and Labour was uh Labour was although I must confess, I think it is imperative that I made a confession at this juncture to my to my uh, audience. I was the Conservative Party lead candidate in the London Borough of uh, London Borough of then London Borough of Greenwich, St Mary's World, in the 1998 council elections. So I, I, I was a carrying Conservative then. But to be fair to Labour, even the point you just made now, when Tony Blair was the Prime Minister and Gordon Brown succeeded him, that police station was still functional in Peckham. It must have been in the last 14 years that the conservative and at some point conservative and lead them had the alliance that the police police station was closed. We, is that historically right? Sort of. But the point that I'm making to you, because you were saying that if we took power from labor in Peckham, the consequences, the consequences are X, Y, Z. What I'm saying to you is that in the last 42 years... Not if, you took power. Not, not, not if you took power. If, as a result of your attempt, and you know this is a long shot, if eventually labor comes in, don't you think there will be backlash against your people? That is the point. I will lie, 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 lie. We, we will be there fighting our corner. Anybody, anybody who thinks I will become an MP and then Labour is going to say this, that, and the other, that, that they, they, they are toying, they are playing with what fire. If, what if, as it is now, you don't become an MP because that seems to be the reality well, of, the electoral, uh, of the electoral system that you are involved in? You may not likely. I, I, I don't, I, I don't, okay, let me tell you the circumstances. I don't agree with you at all, actually. I have every chance of winning that seat. Harriet Harman has been the MP for 42 years. She, she is not contesting this time. You know, when, when you've been an MP for a long time, a lot of the votes are personal votes. That personal vote is gone. I've been on the streets of Peckham practically every day for the last two weeks. When people say to me they are going to vote Labour, and I ask, who is the candidate? They don't know. Who's the, what's the name? So, you are going to vote so, for somebody who you don't know, whose name you don't even know. So, that is what we are doing. We are changing. Because our party is new, we, because we are even new to the young by themselves, we have to convince people to vote for us and we are doing a pretty good job. So I am fairly confident that this is a seat that we can win. But if we come back to the idea that if the seat is won by the Yoruba Party, the Labour Party is then going to victimize uh, Peckham, it's not going to happen. First of all, that would be historic. For us to win, the, for a Yoruba party to win the Peckham seat would be unprecedented in the history of the United Kingdom. As you yourself, when you started from, from the 1600s, for the first time, the Yoruba, we, not just Yoruba, the black community will be treated with some respect that if these people can do what they have done in Peckham, they can do it elsewhere. 
There are 20 constituencies in the UK where the black population is over 25%. When this election is over, we are going to take the Yoruba party in the UK on the road. This is, this is not the end. The reason why we, we, we started this party in February, we haven't even launched it yet when the election was called. And we decided that, well, the election is here. We are going to fight it, even though we've just started. How many candidates? How many? How, how many candidates do you have now? Just me. Okay. Uh, uh, the, the, the next natural line of question will be: I, I'm sitting here now, and I'm and I'm thinking. Okay, you have accepted the fact that you're a proud Yoruba man, arrogant Yoruba man, and I'm thinking, oh. Nigerian nationalities, the mm -hmm. who also have good presence here, uh, other West African nationalities, mm -hmm. uh, who by virtue of the history of colonization uh, mm -hmm. and also, uh, or, or even before colonization, slave trade, uh, mm -hmm. who have people here. Mm -hmm. How would you, even the seeming, uh, the seeming, uh, and I really want to choose my words carefully. Uh, <laughs> please pardon me if I'm a bit cheeky. Don't uh, worry, don't worry, uh, I can take anything. Uh, this seeming arrogance, this Yoruba yeah. people, you know, yeah. they, they, yeah. they, 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 they're so arrogant, they've yeah. even gone to start a former party. Would yeah. you? If you have registered it as, you know, African Party of the UK, mm -hmm. would it not have mustered um, or garnered much more traction than this this Yoruba? Mm. I actually don't agree with you. Whatever you do somebody is bound to say you shouldn't have done it that way. There, there, was, uh, there was an Irish, the, 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 the thing that I always refer to is there's an Irish comedian who's, who's the Nadevalen, who made a joke about the Irish. He, he, he was an Irishman. He said, when you are in Dublin and you ask an Irishman and you say, I'm lost, can you show me the way to the cathedral? So the Irishman will say to you, if I were you, I wouldn't start from here. Well, this is where we are. The idea that I should be pan-Africanist, pan this, pan that, is irrelevant. I have registered the Yoruba party in the UK. That's it. If I wanted to call it pan-African, pan, pan, global, pan, whatever, I would have done that. I registered the Yoruba party in the UK. Now, I have said so many times that when the opportunity arises, we will look after everybody. But I'm not going to waste my energy. It's hard enough convincing the Yoruba people. I will now waste my energy con con uh, convincing Zimbabweans as well and the uh, Eritreans as well. That's a waste of energy. It's a waste of time. This, this party can develop in whatever direction uh, when people become members, they can is a, a democratic party. If you remember, for example, Lib Dems, when uh, uh, Shirley Williams and Co. broke away and formed the uh, Social Democratic Party, there were only four of them. Then they joined the Liberals and become, became the Lib Dems. Progression, fine. I don't, have, I don't want to be leading the party forever till, 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 till I'm in my grave. You can progress from that. But to say that the, 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 the journey of a thousand miles is going to start at mile 100 is daft. You start from one step. That one step, I have taken it. And what I expect from people, first of all, is to even recognize the bravery. All these people, everybody has been here. We haven't done anything. So I have not done something. They are not going to be happy. 
I know, I know, Doc. I, I, I okay. hope as a Yoruba man, you understand the fact that uh, your people, the Yoruba, they don't congratulate people for being pregnant. They only <laughs> congratulate people for giving birth. So, uh, am I making a point? Oh yes, that's why. That's why. That's why. That's why I'm contesting the election. Uh, uh, okay, uh, but having said that. And uh, let's look at it from this other perspective again. Would you have joined or would you have voted for somebody if he or she came to you and said, I have just registered the Indigo Party of United Kingdom and uh, vote for me? Uh, because come to think of it, we are we are you know we are the same we are brother. Okay. okay. Why why would you why would you perchance expect some who are not Yorubas to then vote for you now when you have uh, when you have given a tribal connotation? Okay. Uh, first of all, I, I don't regard myself as tribal. The Yoruba are a nation. They're not tribes. It's like saying English, English is a tribe. We Yoruba, we are not tribe. Now, this idea that if I had called it some other party, indeed we will come and join, it's, a, it's nonsensical. It will never happen. But the idea that I'm some kind of a tribalist, or which is what is being indicated, when I was a 19-year-old, I went to Biafra, with the, with, the, with the Red Cross to go and feed refugees in Biafra when I was 19 with all the dangers with all the dangers we went, a group of us from the University of Ibadan, we went with the International Committee of the Red Cross and the Christian Council of Nigeria to go to Biafra to distribute food and medicine for refugees I I had no, it was not a matter that I had evil friends or whatever. But on television, we could see suffering people. We could see children with Koshoko. We didn't and, stand on our And you were mentees, and you were mentees of, the chief, of your chief ideologue who was also detained, I guess. Be honest about that. Just tell the story the truth. No, it had nothing to do with politics. No, uh, it, was it not? It, it had nothing to do with the fact that Walisho Yinka, who was like the ideological kingpin to to idealists like you, then young university students, was no, detained had, by the one. It had absolutely nothing to do with Yinka at all. Absolutely, it had to do with what we saw with our eyes on television. That there were children with bloated. We were. We, we remember we were medical students. We were just being taught about these sort of diseases that we were witnessing. These people having the disease. That's why we went to Biafra. Nobody asked us. Nobody forced us. Can you imagine what my own parents felt when I came home and said I was going to Biafra? Can you imagine the fear that they felt? And yet we went. We didn't worry about our own the possibility of our own dying. I was explaining to somebody the other day, it, is, it was only after we got back home that you start thinking, that was a bit crazy, wasn't it? But we went. So the idea that uh, you are not going to vote for me because I'm Yoruba is daft. Because at the end of the day, in Nigeria, your politics might be whatever it is. But here, you are in the same boat. You are in the same boat. And to say you are then going to go and form your own party uh, because the, you are going to be a copycat because the Yorubas have done it, we are going to do it too. It doesn't make any sense. But people, well, can, no, people have but, choice. No, man, Kachowani, you've made it so difficult for... And I asked you a simple question. Would you have voted... If somebody had come to you and I said, "Oh, I, 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 I formed the Indigo Party. I'm now a candidate of the Indigo Party, and you live in the constituency. Uh, please vote for me." Would you have voted for? for with you respect, with due respect, that is hypothetical. Absolutely hypothetical. 
and I'm not interested, seriously, it's purely hypothetical. If I'm going to wait, I might wait forever, and they will never form a party. The party is formed. We have done it. That's the difference. Okay. This party is not hypothetical. It is registered. It is there. And you have a choice. Everybody has a choice. You can either come with us, or you can go with them. Doctor, you made that point. You made that point well enough. And you see, uh, we are on a live show. Could see opportunity can do no for the benefit of those who are watching us. Uh, doctor, as uh, in a way, uh, it me to reveal my my urbanist too. Uh, where he wants me to uh, to, to be a bit soft with him, but uh, you know, this is the job. Of uh, you know, one one has to sometimes play the devil's advocate doing doing this task. I'm happy. I'm here now, listening to a very articulate, intellectually robust uh, personality. Thank but you. I'm in mean, every way, shape, or form looking at the plethora of lacune that seem to be bedeviling. Uh, the idealistic, the inspirational steps you are taking. Doc, apart from this being a long shot electorally, and apart from the fact that, you know, I asked you that could he, could it precipitate a retributive or vindictive uh -huh. thing that, uh, Okay. Now, the other direction to go, uh, and the fact that it seems somewhat myopic that within the context of the of the broadness of the African of the African uh, diaspora in United Kingdom, especially in the Greater London area, you have you have been so insular to make this a Yoruba party. No, okay, all those things you seem to have your but I am also sitting there thinking this as, let me call it Dutch courage, as it may be, how are some of your friends or some of the folks that are historically close to you who have always been members of the Labour Party or who have found, who have been predisposed to voting Labour over decades? How are they taking this? Surprised. That's 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 the word I will use. Surprised, because they no didn't. Backlash, speak. No backlash of anger. No, nope. they did. They, well, I mean, they are the ones. Some of them have donated uh, to, to 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 the election. What what what? In, initially, in fact, uh, one of my friends uh, sent me a text saying he thought that this was Awada. He thought it was a joke. Because it did nobody and nobody conceptualized or perceived that this was something that a Yoruba person would do. They have, didn't, you, they didn't, have, you, have you ever been involved with the, uh, with the Yoruba Nation agenda? Yes, I used I used to be the uh, coordinator for Ilana UK. Okay, and and that's the Ilana is the peculiar. The, the peculiar group that the uh, the distinguished professor uh, who happens to be the leader of the umbrella uh, of the umbrella organization that coordinate that this is, belongs to or that you formed, Professor, uh, what's the name of, of, of the elderly gentleman now? Akitoye. Uh, Professor Akintori, so you have you have always you have always subscribed to the Yoruba National Agenda. Is this a transmutation of a sort, a transmutation of a sort of the Yoruba Yoruba Agenda? More so when a a a, a, a kingsman of yours uh, has emerged as the president of Nigeria, and the Yoruba National Agenda is. Uh, is losing eloquence of a sort in the last couple of months. Is this okay. a, a transmutation? No, it's got nothing at all 
to do with the Yoruba nation. Let me spell that out so that everybody can understand it. The Yoruba party in the UK, that's why it's, that is why it has that specific phraseology. The Yoruba party in the UK is a UK political party similar to the Labour Party, similar to the Tory party. It has no Nigerian connection. I would have thought that uh, similar to uh, Cam Cymru, uh, similar to the Scottish party and, uh, and similar to the uh, similar to these Irish parties in Northern Ireland. Okay. More, more than because labor, the colonial party labor and leave them are quite more generic, quite broader. And okay. The, 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 the peculiarity of the suffering that we suffer here necessitates us having political power in the UK. Suffering, you know, suffering, uh, that, suffering, suffering mm. that made you suffering that made you one of the most celebrated surgeons in the in the in the contemporary history of medicine in the UK in the last couple of in the last dec couple of decades. Suffering okay. that made you a prominent member of the uh, General Medical Council. Suffering this suffering this suffering talk for that that is me. That is me. I am not the whole of the Yoruba people. I'm not the whole. I'm not the entire Yoruba community. I have been going from mosques to churches to see the effect that this country has on our people. They need advocates. They need political power to be able to do the things that they aspire for their children. I, I was in, in, in one of the, the addressing salon, and what she was saying that the most were the children, that they are out of control, you can't talk to them, you can't do anything. They are out of control because they do not have any focus. They do not have somewhere they can say, yes, I am Yoruba, and this is what Yoruba is like. This is no pride, nobody giving them the pride themselves. That is what well, we are there for. Okay, go on. Wait, wait there, please. Please, one minute. Like I told you, is you know, is like a palosh talk between friends. Yes, of if, course. Uh, if you were to reconcile the position you have just made now. The point of just now. if we are to reconcile it with the fact that as we speak, the rate at which the Yoruba community and and the Indibo community, the rate at which the Yoruba, let me focus on the Yoruba because of your agenda now, the rate at which you have nurtured children who have done well educationally, who have been assimilated into upper class, every weekend now you get to see marriages of Yoruba youngsters marrying even up to the upper class of the Caucasian community in the UK. So because of those who probably failed to nurture their own children well, or whose children missed the way, you cannot be using that minority to then say suffering when you nurtured doctors and medical professionals of you know high class medical professionals <laughs> and many Yoruba many Yoruba kindred like you have also nurtured outstanding professionals banks in the city if you go there now Ademola Tokumbo all these major banks international banks law firms and I'm sitting there and you're saying suffering and you are using the example of maybe the minority who you know things didn't work out for. With due respect, they are not the minority. We are the minority. And I have other things to say about this, but to start with, we are the minority. We are the lucky ones. So the idea that all the Yorubas that come here, they are successful. I was at uh, uh, one of the uh, restaurant, Yoruba restaurants with young men, and I, I was having a chat, a chat to them. The suffering that they are going through is unimaginable. Such as but specific. They are homeless. They don't have regular jobs. They can't, they, they don't have any families to, to, to relate to. But let me come back to those of us who are successful. 
Because I, I think when you talk about success, what has my success done for Yoruba land? I come, I come from Yoruba land. I come from the Yoruba land. All my success, all my contribution to medicine was done here. I could have done it in Nigeria. I am one of the first, I'm the first set of Awolowo's children. I started primary school on the 1st of January, 1955. People like me, when we were at the university, used to say, we were the future of Nigeria. We were going to do this, we were going to do that, we were going to do the other. It didn't materialize. So, so the, the other side of the equation, when you start talking and saying, you are successful in the UK, the, successful, the success is UK. The success is not Yoruba land. Imagine if all of us were back in Yoruba land, what that place would be like. So, oh, so, so now, now, now you've given me your chin. Yeah, so, now you've given me your chin to point. So this party, this party is looking at a day when there will be when there will be return to Zion. I didn't say that. You that's what you said. I didn't say that. What 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 what, what, what now? No. You said imagine huh? if we were to go back to Yoruba land. Yes, that that that's that's uh, um, that's not the aim of the party. The aim of the party is to look after our well-being. Yeah. What you then do is up to you. But the point I was trying to make to you is that when you are looking at this equation that you are saying you are successful, you are this, you are that, and the other, it's a loss to Yoruba land as well. So you need to look at both sides of the equation, not just one side. But the aim but, of a, but, but intellectually and logically, the two sides don't seem to be ostensibly ostensibly synergizing or fitting in. On the one hand, it's like you it's like a double speak. On the one hand, you are speaking to like uh when the Jews remember, you understand? And going back to going back to and on the other hand, you are speaking to articulating a force that will articulate the rights of the Yorubans in the UK. What is your ideological disposition or ideological direction that will not be giving the impression of a scatterjack? You must I've be told. I've, 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 I've said, I've said, I've said, remember I told you one word, Jews. Because they have political clout. Because they have political power, they not only can influence what happens here, they influence what happens in Israel. We are politically weak here. We are also politically weak in Nigeria. Don't deceive yourself because one of you is president. You are politically weak in Nigeria. You are politically weak here. What we are trying to do is to make you at least politically strong here. To give you clout here. Yeah. To give you power here. Yeah. So, Dr. 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 So, Dr. So, Dr. I'm Salah, listening. Man, I'm I, listening. I, Doctor, I, I want to be very honest with you. It's been a very engaging, intellectually Thank engaging, you. interesting Thank you. session with you. I wish it could continue. Uh, but uh, there is something called the, the deadline in, in this business. Uh, uh, and I'm... Um, I don't want to. Uh, I don't want the youngsters in the studio in Lagos uh, to be lambasting me at the time. So, uh, well, well, you can, can tell them. Them. I'm, a, I'm available for another interview. We can yeah, have. We, 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 we can do it. We'll see how it goes because you're exactly. not the only Nigerian. I, I, I'm actually talking to Nigerians who will be featuring in the general elections on, on the fourth of July. Fantastic! Fantastic! That's great. Thank, thank you very much for this opportunity. It's, it's been I a pleasure. The best. I wish you all the best in this. It's uh, been a pleasure. Uh, it's uh, been a pleasure. political adventure. Uh, I will look forward to maybe having you uh, sometime uh, in not too distant future. Thank you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate this. Very, thank very you. much. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen watching, I am still Bola Oba on Plus Politics. This is where we wrap it for today. Have a good evening.